Good day or evening to everyone out there in the decoding world. My name is Logan with Decode Your Reality, and I have, of course, the almighty great Santos Bonacci, the great syncretist from the Universal Truth School coming live to you. We're both in Mexico right now, the great country of Mexico. And Santos, of course, it's always an honor to share some time and space with you, my friend. And what a wonderful topic to bring on this podcast, which is the upcoming Grand Conjunction, which is less than 48 hours away on the 21st of December. And uh, to me, I, I, I couldn't have picked a better topic to reunite with you and kind of start talking about some great information. So what have you got for us? Because I know a lot of people out there that follow your work and they're just dying to know the more hidden secrets behind this uh, upcoming grand conjunction of the boss and this, the boss's son, Jupiter and Saturn. So I'm gonna let you take the stage, my brother, and uh, feel free to just give us the gold nuggets. I'm looking forward to hearing what you got. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Much appreciated. Always great working with you, Logan. Um, just a pleasure because you're, uh, you're always on the ball with your insights and your expanded consciousness. So this is where I like to be with uh, like-minded people. Um, so the grand conjunction is very special. And I don't think many astrologers realize how special because over 50 years ago in 1962 on the 5th of February, in Aquarius, all seven visible planets were all together in the sign of Aquarius. So <clears throat> if you go, excuse me, into any astrological website and punch in 6 a.m. 5th of February, 1962, you will see all six, seven visible planets including the two luminaries, sun and moon, all, all of them in Aquarius. This is a 4,220,000 year occurrence. So what happened in 1962 was that was a signal and then there would be a 50 year cusp, which brings you straight to the year 2012. And then there's a seven or eight year kind of a dark night period where everything will be exposed. All the old has to be brought out into the daylight exposed so that people wake, awaken from their sleep, the ones who are worthy. And then we had to wait for the great conjunction. This great conjunction is great. Why? Well, first of all, because the two highest portals, heavens, spheres, uh, domains, kingdoms, whatever you want to call them. There's all kinds of uh, heavenly uh, infrastructure, heavenly dimensions. And Saturn and Jupiter hold the highest of these portals. Let me shut this window for less noise. So when they come together, what's so special about them is that they both uh, are channeling from counter space into our solar system. They are channeling together both of their energies. Now, Saturn is a malefic and Jupiter is a benefic. And when they come together like this, they both become neutral. So what will happen is there will be an electromagnetic pulse generated 
and it will shift things. I can't say for a certain for a certainty what exactly will take place, whether everyone will benefit, whether there will be any uh, catastrophes or any kind of physical um, phenomena occurring. I believe it's going to be a, a transformation and expansiousness and ex an ascension for the ones who are worthy of that frequency. That frequency is special. It will not have the same effect for everybody. So it's like when you go to a, okay, so if I go to a Led Zeppelin concert, I will be absolutely out of my body. I will be absolutely the happiest person <laughs> in the world. So, because I'm ready for it, I love them. I'm already the, the greatest devotee of all time. I know that because no one loves them more than I do. But if I bring someone along who knows nothing of Led Zeppelin, they're pretty much not ready for it. They don't know what to expect. And even though they'll be dazzled by the brilliance of this band, they will still not have all of that history that I've had with them since I was 17, which was way back in the seven, early 70s. <laughs> no, late 70s. <laughs> uh, in the first hippie days, I'm still uh, carrying the hippie theme, of course. <laughs> You're never going to lose that. <clears throat> nah, no way. <laughs> so, so that would be pro probably uh, a fairly appropriate analogy we have been waiting for a long time so what will happen when those portals what happens is though each planet is not a globe what we call planets jupiter saturn mars mercury and venus those five they are called wandering stars a star is a Taurus field, they are anagrams for each other. Taurus, star, same word. But in the middle of every Taurus field is what's called a hyperbola, bowl, bowl, hyperbola. And that bowl, that's also uh, soul, the sun. Soul and bowl are interchangeable. So bowl which turns out to be Baal or Baal, as in Christobal, Christ the Baal. Or you could even say diabolical. That Baal word is probably the most important word in the universe. So in those two, what we're seeing when we see these luminaries in the sky, stars, sun, moon, planets, they are wormholes. So the moon, she will be in Aries, uh, one degree Aries, making a perfect sextile with Jupiter and Saturn. In fact, let me check where Mercury will be. And of course, Mercury and the sun will be together in zero. Sun will be zero degrees Capricorn. Of course, it's the 21st of December. And Mercury will be right next to it, one degree. So today it was Kazemi, which means they were on the same degree. But in two days time, they will be separated just by one degree. Now, when they come together, these, these holes, these wormholes, energy pours through. So, at the very least, for people who don't understand the heavens and astrology and uh, what these wonderful deities and bodies are in our solar system, 
at the very least, they can understand that this is natural phenomena. Whether they believe in a certain, certain type of God or creator, it matters not. This is happening. Just the same as when a volcano or a tornado or a hurricane is happening, it's, it's happening. And so all you've got to do is look up and you'll see every evening in the West, after the sun goes down, you will see Saturn and Jupiter together. And they will be in zero degrees Aquarius. Zero degrees. In fact, let me just check the... the um... So Saturn will be zero degrees 31 minutes. Jupiter, zero degrees 33 minutes. What, 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 do you, what, do you, uh, what time are you basing that on on the 21st? What time are you using? Because that, ha that mm. has a role in it, obviously. That's going to be about nine in the evening of the 21st in nine New in York. York. Okay. So Eastern time. Is there, a reason why is there a reason why you're choosing 9 p.m. on the 21st? The Eastern yeah, just time? out of um, laziness, I guess. I just pulled up, you know, astrotheme.com. Yeah. Yeah. And it just turned out to give me some great, uh, some great um, degrees, visuals. I see uh, a glorious day ahead. Hmm. You can't... You, you can't uh, deny this. It's going to be incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've been in conjunction every 20 years. They, they come together like this, but not on zero degrees and yep. not in Aquarius. Yep. This is the special thing because Aquarius is where we're all focusing in tropical astrology. Everyone's focusing on this. So... When you look at it like that, you will see that um, it's all about Aquarius, which is knowledge, awakeness, humanitarianism, science, um, friendship, Revolution. society. <laughs> Go on. Revolutions, revolutionary. Yep, and most importantly, aspirations. Yeah. So... These days, people have lost their aspirations. You know, there's a lot of depression. There's a lot of worry, anxiety. Everybody's scared of the next guy standing next to them coughing. Everyone feels that they're, um, you know, they're vulnerable to some kind of a spooky virus out there. Well, these things distract us from our uh, aspirations. And this will be a big day for aspirations, friendships, humanitarian uh, concerns, science, and a great leap forward for humanity. But again, I stress, you know, this will be for those who are ready, who have walked the path and who are of that frequency. Because in the main, when people are zombies, they don't they cannot receive fully the blessings of the energies surrounding them. You know, they, even if there's good energies, they still find a way to sabotage their lives and those of others. They still find a way to, you know, uh, complicate those energies and they don't understand them. Well, uh, to be honest, I'm hopeful that everyone will awaken it. That will be just the best thing. It'll be so beautiful. Why should we see lives lost? But then again, the universe is very intelligent and it does not save what is not salvageable. You know, uh, some, some things that just cannot be transformed. And that's by choice. You know, people have uh, really chosen their, their way by their actions, their intent, uh, their behavior, their choices. And so our choice is the finest. Our choice is to do what is good. And I do believe that great good will come upon the earth. Um, as for the build-up of, let's call it, antagonistic energy, which we can see clearly all around, 
on the social networks, media, in the news, they are all just, it's all scary, right? Everything is uh, dreadful and woeful and we've got nothing but fear to look ahead until we get vaccinated and, and all, of this, um, all of this talk. So certainly there are enemies of this uh, great conjunction. There are great enemies because they will not resist. You know, they will, they will be the ones that will hide under the rocks, as the scripture says, in the day of the Lord, they will flee from the presence of the Lord and they will hide under the crags and beg for the crags to protect them from the wrath of the Lord. But nothing in that day will protect them. They will be dissolved. You know, I mean, they may not be dissolved physically, but their power will. To a certain extent, um, you know, their, their power will be nullified, just as Jupiter will nullify the negative, malefic influences of Saturn. This is what happens when there's a conjunction. Uh, the malefics cancel each other out. The benefics expand each other. And then when a malefic and a benefic are together, the benefic wins. So this will be interesting. This is a, um, a shaking of the hands of father and son who for many thousands of years have been warring. Saturn is the king of the Titans. Titan is another way of saying Saturn, Titan, Satan, Shatan. Uh, and then Zeus or Jupiter, his son is king of the Olympians. This is why the Old Testament is Saturnian and you have a very evil kind of God, the God of war, the God of the lie. I give you a lie. I give you the truth. This is what scripture says. Whereas the New Testament along comes Jupiter Zeus, Jesus, and everything's nice again. Love thy enemy. Do unto others as you wish them to do to you. Pray for your enemies. Uh, be harmonious, be uh, charitable, etc., etc. So one is the saviour and one is the grim reaper. So in a way, they're both doing what nature calls for. Everything is born, grows and decays. So I guess you've got Krishna and Shiva coming together. Not the regeneration. Yep. Yeah. Jupiter is um, an archetype of Krishna for sure. No doubt. Uh, and, and even Saturn is, you know, they all are. The sun is, the moon is, they all are, Venus. But in certain ways, more so Jupiter, because Jupiter has the purest of the benefic light. There's never any harm with Jupiter. You know, there's the sun. The sun can grow your garden, but it can also um, Give you cook sun. you in the desert. Yeah and kill you yeah yeah so i wanted to point out to everybody listening out there that in the in the cards which all of you know that i'm so fancied around the 21st of december is the world card in the tarot which is the last card in the major arcana cards card number 21 and that has the four faces of God on it, and it has the androgynous being behind what appears to be the Vesica Pisces. And, you know, Santos, you said it so great. We're moving into the age of Aquarius. It's one of the four fixed signs of astrology. <clears throat> so it's one of the four, if you put the X there, it's, it's one of those pieces of that X. And in the cards of illumination, um, you know, this is the actual card for December 21st. It's the 10 hearts card and of course hearts is fire so clearly that death and regeneration fits in there nicely and the 10 is the androgynous binary number because the zero is feminine and the one is masculine so you have a clash of those two coming together to form that unison which you know that coming together of father and son is uh i don't know it's such a beautiful story that you're you're, you're kind of 
expressing here on there where the father and son have been at odds for so long and now they're forced to come together or I wouldn't even say forced, but they're coming together. And Santos, do you want to touch on that, them creating what's that star of Bethlehem? Where does that fit into all of this since they're so close and they're all, they're both at zero degrees? This is the star. This is the one, this is the star of Bethlehem. Um, because they, they become one. See, in astrology, a conjunction has the same root as conjugal or to conjugate, to bring together, to join together. So a conjugal marriage, it's a marriage. It's like they can't escape being together. They just, they just can't. And their portals, their wormholes will be joined together. It'll be like, it'll be like this. Depending on the de declination, I mean, they will be uh, along the ecliptic, they will be zero degrees for sure, right? But in declination, it might Saturn behind, behind you, but it might be, he's going to be, um, actually, he's going to be uh, slightly above, I think. I haven't checked the declination, but it's probably, you know, Saturn will be probably like this. But even so, that that portal will exist despite the declination. If the declination is zero degrees, then we, we've got something. I haven't checked. I haven't even checked. I've been so busy. But any astrologers out there, please check the uh, declination. Yeah, because that's the important thing. So right ascension is everything going like this on the ecliptic, everything traveling along the trajectory of the ecliptic. That's right ascension. Declination is everything above, positive, and below the ecliptic, negative. Certainly, I know for sure that Saturn is positive declination, but I don't know how much. Hopefully, it's less than a degree. Hmm. Interesting. Yep, and that will be, that will determine the power of this. But even just right ascension of meridian, just zero degrees, that's plenty. That's going to be strong enough because these two guys are very, very powerful. They have all the say when it comes to making the big changes in history. They have all, all of it. Mm -hmm. And this particular conjunction is very, very, very special because it is zero degrees. Well, let's not forget you got Pluto in Capricorn still. You have Hades still sitting in that zodiac sign of Capricorn, meaning Earth, and you know, obviously playing out its part during this grand conjunction. I mean, I, I clearly can't leave that position out because I think it's still. I mean, that I think what is Pluto at like 20, 23 degrees or something, right? So, pretty strong position right now in Capricorn. Yeah, twenty three, very very strong. Yep. Um, so. Continuing with that theme, um, transformation in the political arena. Yep. Um, he's going to be holding that space for us. So, and Neptune in Pisces direct, that will bring, Neptune will bring sort of an integrating kind of an energy and Pisces is about the, you know, the, all of humanity in the 12th sign, the last sign. And the moon just exits Pisces on that day yep. and enters into Aries where Mars is, which gives it extra strength. So you've got Mars and Pluto on 23 degrees squaring each other. Air, Mars in Aries, Pluto in Capricorn. And there's a perfect square between them. There is a perfect conjunction with Jupiter and Saturn and the one with Mercury and the sun. So those are some great, that's a conjunction, a square and a sextile, which are strong. And then, very. V, and then Venus is where, I forget where Venus is at. Venus is eight degrees Sagittarius. Sagittarius, that's right. So that's good because that's the ninth sign and Venus brings wisdom in the house 
or rather the sign of understanding, the sign of seeing with the third eye. So that's gonna, she's gonna hold space there. Uh, Uranus in, yeah, Uranus in Taurus. What can I say about that? Well, Uranus falls in Taurus and he's retrograding. So um, that's, that's something that's gonna be a bit tricky. Uh, Uranus retrograding conjunct Lilith in Taurus. That's gonna be interesting. So maybe we're gonna see uh, a great awakening. And on the other side, we might see a lot of people losing it, you know, like uh, getting that pulse, but not being able to use it to transform. So they're gonna be pulsed all right. <laughs> But um, how they uh, are affected is yet to be seen. Yep. We'll know in a couple of days. You know, I mean, it's very possible because, I mean, I've been speculating on this, talking about it, getting a lot of people asking me about what my opinion is on this. And, you know, I, I find when, when there's a lot, I mean, we take 2012, for example, there was so much focus on that year, I mean, December 21st, 2012, nothing happened, right? So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, we're talking about the great conjunction, but you know, it could just be another day where we, you know, you as empath, I mean, I'm not an empath Santo. So, you know, I don't, I go more an empirical and I go by the data that the charts show, but you empaths out there, maybe you're gonna feel a great shift. I know a lot of empaths right now are coming out and saying that they're feeling all these massive shifts going on right now but december 21st the great conjunction could just be another day that passes by not to belittle it and say that it has no merit or any strength in our world but definitely you know all this focal focal point on december 21st it could just pass us right by and then because we know i mean if you're going to follow theology and biblical stuff it says right in the scriptures that you know the thief in the night is when people are going to least expect it. So, I mean, when all this focus is on a popular notion in the world stage, you know, it may be that it's just going to be another day and we're going to, we're going to get blindsided by something. I don't know. My, my gamble is on the, on, on 2021. That's just, you know, that's just my personal take on it is when you're going to see a lot of massive significance. Um, maybe even, you know, Nibiru planet X, if you believe in that kind of stuff, the blue Kachina, red Kachina, the return of Ron Horus, which, you know, if you're into the magnetosphere and that kind of signature stuff, there are plenty of people out there that are showing that there's a there's planetary bodies behind the earth right now in the magnetosphere. And of course that falls in line with the blue and red Kachina and the Egyptian rods and Horus. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of goodies on the table right now, absolutely for sure uh, on what's going to be happening right now. So I, I'm pretty, ex I'm, I'm excited, man. Right. Santos exciting times to oh, be yeah. in right now. I mean, this is the greatest times of our lives, realistically, even though, it could be a massive disruption, but I mean, this is the greatest time to be living in right now. <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah we're, wit we're witnessing history. It's um, history in the making. And like you said, it might be just like a normal day for most people. Uh, 2012 was pretty much just a normal day. And we didn't really, um, get moved so much as as we expected but but it did it did shift things um and what happened was the the controllers whoever they are of this beautiful realm we live in they upped their ante and they pulled a um you know, they pulled a, uh, a switch of Rooney on us. They somehow managed to thwart us of the blessings that were supposed to come. And whatever magic trick they had, whatever technology they have, well, I believe that they're not going to be able to have access to it this time around. This time around, um, you know, they've been given an extra eight years of activity so that they can be exposed. 
and they've done a great job of exposing themselves. I mean, Bill Gates, Fauci, everyone who's awakened knows that these are the scum of the earth, absolute putrid, demonic weasels, just absolute sellouts, prostitutes, whores, adrenochrome, child trafficking, demons, you know, and, and this is now known, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's common knowledge now, maybe not for the zombies, uh, you know, they'll never know anything, you know, they let the dead bury the dead, but you and I and millions of people have woken up, have woken up to these creeps and what they've been doing for, uh, Fauci's been, Fauci's behind the AIDS virus, he's behind Ebola, uh, Zika, um, um, what are all, all those names? There's so many names of virus. He's behind all of them. That, that man there, Fauci, has a very um, uh, sinister frequency to it. You know, um, it's like um, the mouth and teeth of a serpent, you know, like a serpent ready to bite. You know, that's, that's what the meaning is. And so, and um, this guy now, he's, he's exposed. He's telling lies. Every day he changes his tune and it's on record. You know, the cloud is always going to be the cloud and it's always going to be there. And so they, all they're doing is they're just putting on record for us so that we can build evidence for their trials. And um, they'll be dealt with. They won't escape. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's fascinating, Santos, because, um, you know, uh, Fauci and Gates, they both, this is their birth card. They both have the seven of hearts birth card. Yeah. And they're both in bed together. And that's, you know, the counterpart of the, uh, of the ace spades card. And the ace spades card is the COVID-19 card. And it's also the birth card of the CDC and the World Health Organization. So all of these guys completely and gals that are working for these enterprises are, you know, you can clearly see it in the codes that they're working together. And you're right. I mean, you know, to me, they're just doing their job. I'm not excusing anything that they're doing because it's the superhero versus the villain. But clearly they're the villains. They've drawn their line in the sand. They've picked their team that they work for. And obviously... You and I and the millions of others that are waking up, we've drawn a line in the sand and we're such a minority because there are over 7.5 billion people on the world today, on the world stage. And folks, we're playing the game of chess. I mean, if you want to just break it down to a simple game called chess, that's what we're playing on the world stage. And the majority of people are pawns, which is the major pieces on the board. You want to obviously, if you're a pawn, you want to march down the board and become a queen. But if you're a piece behind the pawns, Santos, I know you're one of them. You know, you're the queen clubs. You want to be the, the, the voice of the team that brings constructive measures to the world stage. That's part of your code. That's part of why you're here. You work for, you know, I like to bring Star Wars. You work for Team Yoda. And, you know, you got Team Darth Vader, which is the Fauci's and the Gates's, and that's what they're doing. So, but this grand conjunction coming up, man, is absolutely no exception to the great change that's going to be coming upon us. I, I'm, I'm super stoked, dude. I'm so I'm glad I'm here in Mexico. Not, I'm not trying to, you know, I, you're, it's funny. You're in Mexico. I'm in Mexico. We chose to come here, um, you know, and there's, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, and I don't want to put any fear in anybody because you're supposed to be exactly where you're at, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're at right now. But at the same time, you know, always just make sure you have, things in order and you're ready to, you know, to, to fly by the seat of your pants because that's what the great conjunction could bring, right? The stars could bring that. And, uh, and the re I, I, that, that reset is, uh, is so close at hand, man. Exciting times, man, realistically. I think we're going to have such a, you know, I, you know what I find fascinating is, you know, what is, what, what's up with the Space Force that the United States government comes out with you know, not too long ago. Why now and not 10 years ago? You know, I mean, it's so fascinating. I mean, are we going to see a, 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 an, an alien invasion and is it going to be fake? You know, these are things that I always ponder and bring out to my viewers because 
I'm always saying, you know, don't just use your illusionary eyes to see out there because these are very deceptive, these eyes. Um, and that's why, you know, I love talking to you because you give such great layers with the stars and, um, and the charts of astrology and then all your syncretism and your wisdom. You just had an event, right? And um, the Riviera Maya just a couple of days ago, right? Yep. I uh, released, um, I released Sam best method. Your method. Yep. Yep. And it's, it's the method, it's the model and the method for understanding syncretism. It's the only model. SAM, S-A-A-M, is an acronym for Syncretic Astrological Atomological Model. That's the model. Nice. If you don't, if you don't have the atomological, astrological model, you're, you're, you're down the wrong path and, and you may not come back. <laughs> You'll get lost. Yeah. It's the only model. The universe is astrological. Astrology is electrodynamics, uh, electromagnetics. That's all it is. So when you're reading someone's chart, you're reading their electromagnetic constitution. I love so it. that's the model. Best, B-E-S-T, is Bonacci ecliptic sine wave Taurus method. So obviously I've got my name in there because I've been doing this for 10 years and I've not learned this of anybody, nor, not Plato, nor Pythagoras, nor Porphyry or any of the greats. Yes, they were teaching all those things individually and separately, mm -hmm. but not as I'm doing, which is a complete system. And when you have a model and a method that works every time, every how, every which way, then that's the correct model. Most models, even the quantum physics model is faulty. It's flawed. Let me give you an example. Allopathy. You've got cancer. You go to a doctor and they have their model is allopathy mm -hmm. and their method is chemotherapy or some other kind of deadly weapon they're going to use against you. And that's the method and they do not deviate from the method because that's how they've been, they've been schooled. So you have a bad model and a bad method. Homeopathy or homeopathy, the model is homeopathic and the method is to treat natural diseases with natural remedies. Plants. Homeopathic, homeosapien, right? Yep. yep. And so with the Sam best method, best includes ecliptic sine wave and Taurus field, which are exactly all really the same thing. The ecliptic, what I'm doing is I'm a teacher of the ecliptic. I teach ecliptic science. Mm. I always use the ecliptic in my presentations to explain everything. And that ecliptic is the sine wave. Because when you, when you uh, get a map of the earth and you have the equator in the middle, Tropic of Cancer on top, Tropic of Capricorn below, then you have the sun Let's start from the right, your right. You have the sun starting at the equator on the 21st of March, the equinox, and it goes up to the Tropic of Cancer to the 21st of June, the solstice. Then it goes down to the 23rd of September, the autumnal equinox, 
and then it goes further down to Capricorn, 21st of December, and that will be in two days' time. And that forms a cross. That's, that bar of the cross is the solstices, and the equal bar is the equinoxes. The reason why the vertical bar is longer at the bottom is because when the sun goes down to the Tropic of Capricorn, it casts a longer shadow. Mm -hmm. Whereas when the sun goes up to the Tropic of Cancer, on a sundial, the shadow is very short. Mm -hmm. So that's why the Celtic cross is the, the most pure of all crosses. In the letter T, which is the same shape as your body with your arms outstretched yep. horizontally. So that T is the man, it represents the man, it represents the sine wave, the ecliptic, and the T is for the Taurus field and for Atum. All is Atum. That, that, that Celtic cross is, is also the photon of light and that fits right inside the Taurus field and the flower life and all that. Santos, I mean, I, 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 obviously we're gonna talk about this other t another time, but I have, I'm almost breaking through with uh, how Rodin Circle fits and the keys to the universe, Tesla, fits into that Taurus field. And I'm excited to share it with you because <laughs> man, I'm, I'm almost close to breaking it. Um, and of course, you know, using some of the stuff that you have but I'm looking forward to sharing with you. Um, but that photon, that, that cross fits right in, into the two Taurus fields, right? I mean, absolutely. The, the two yes. Yeah. Yep. It is the Taurus field. Everything is toroidal. Tor is the root of the word Torah or taro. Tar, tar. Uh, Tara, of course, is the goddess, the Irish Radharani or Mary, the Virgin, Isis, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's, it's always the Taurus field. Yep. So Tara, Tarot, Torah, in reverse, rotate. Tor is rotate in reverse. Everything is rotating, all atoms, yep. turning, Tor, talk, creating torsion fields. So everything having to do with these torsion fields, that's how the atomic universe is ordered. It is ordered in such a precise way that very rarely does it make mistakes. Very rarely does it produce something that is faulty it generally holds its own, even though the evil ones have infiltrated our system and tried desperately. For instance, one way they try to destroy the beautiful harmony that exists in the universe is by vaccinating young children. <clears throat> Vaccinations destroy the nervous system. The nervous system is a tree of life in you. It's the Christ in you. The nervous system is what needs to be nourished for the individual to ascend correctly. And there are ways of nourishing the universe, uh, the uh, tree of life. Mm -hmm. You must not eat from the tree of life or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because this tree, if you uh, deplete your nervous system through bad diet, bad sexual practices, alcoholism, addictions, etc., you are eating from that tree and you are depriving yourself of nourishment which will sustain you forever and rejuvenate you, keep you happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. totally. And you look around, people are not happy. Uh, how do you know that? Well, they're always chasing something. They're always busy, running around, got to do this, got to do that, got an appointment, very busy today, 
got lots on and they're escaping the meditation that they should be doing, which will grant them access to everything, yep. to all their powers, all their magic, just that one thing, meditation. Which most people don't do. I mean, when I do my readings for people, I find that the majority that people, of people that come to me, they should be meditating every, I mean, everybody should be meditating every single day for at least 10 minutes, if not 24 for one minute for every hour. But you know, that a lot, I mean, these are to me and anyway, this is just how I, I believe these are your two Satans, your two eyes, because these are the deceivers of what you see in this world. You can easily be fooled by these two eyes, but your third eye, when you close your eyes and you go inward, that's when you really start to download and see things for what they really are. And the pineal gland, of course, is in St. Peter's Square in the Vatican. So obviously that alone should tell you how important meditation is. But the problem with today's society is that meditation is something that people really don't want to do because we've been programmed as a society to treat life like it's a scratch ticket. It's like I scratch it off. I want to get paid right away. Oh, I won $20. I want to go and collect my $20. Meditation doesn't work like that. You don't have an instant payoff or gratification when you do meditation, it takes time to really uh, develop the skill of meditation. And then when you get really good at that meditation, that's when you start to have the massive downloads because you got to clean out the cobwebs. You got to get in tune. It's all about frequency and vibration. And, and of course, getting in tune with the portals, the, the, um, the wormholes called the planets or stars, right? Santos, I mean, the, the, that's what the, the grand conjunction, man. Um, getting into it, I, I would say to all of you listening out there, if you're going to be doing anything on the 21st, in two days from now, you should be meditating on that night or day and asking for some kind of wisdom or knowledge to come into your brain because um, this is a big deal on the world stage coming up in just under 48 hours, man, you know? So meditation is something that I feel everyone should be doing on the 21st um, rather than, you know, messing around and doing something that's kind of probably below you, so to speak. So, you know, hey, Santos, we're talking with the great Santos Bonacci. And folks, you know, I, I, I don't want to keep this too long, Santos. I know you have a busy schedule, but I want to let all of you know um, that Santos and I are, you know, we've become really good friends. And, and um, one of the great things about Santos is that he's a teacher of true wisdom and knowledge. He doesn't go after the dogma or propaganda. And, you know, Santos, I'm just going to let everybody know because I know it's not a secret. Him and I, Santos and I were both raised in the same religion. We were both raised in the Jehovah's Witness religion, which is kind of fascinating in itself, right? Um, but it served a purpose because obviously there are truths and everything. But nonetheless, him and I are, are closely connected. And Santos, as you know, you're born on the 24th. And my subscribers know how important the 24 is because it's tied to the element chromium, which is our chromosomes. And the, the, the element, uh, I'm sorry, the medicine card, the crow, which is one of your cards. And the crow is the speaker of the truth. It's one of the smartest birds there are. And of course, Santos, you know, your card is the, um, the Queen Clubs card, which is the queen of the cosmos, the, the mind of the, co this represents air and it's the mind of the cosmos, the queen of the cosmos, all about love and bringing forth new ideas that are going to, you know, move, help mend the world and bring the world together. And then your other card is the three of hearts. And this card is all about coming together as the, the Trinity and celebrate. This is the celebration of life. And that is exactly why I adore you so much. And I can call you one of my brothers because I know that, you know, I was following your work because, you know, I've been, I was following your work for years and I was like, I'm going to meet this guy. And then you came to LA and we you got, I got, you got to stay with me and my friends, and that was such a glorious time. And we've been stuck together ever since, and you're doing your thing, I'm doing my thing. But we work for the same team, and that's the great part. And we're all here. If you're watching this, you work for the same team, and you're here to usher in this great grand conjunction of the father and son coming together and for, leave the dogma and propaganda behind, but coming in forth and bringing this 
amazing energy coming in and the earth needs to be repaired because it's sick. And what does the body do when it's sick? It repairs itself. You don't have to do anything. You got white blood cells that go and fight the good fight. And, um, you know, that's exactly how this world is. And Santos, you know, you're one of those, those guys that are fighting the good fight and you're, you work for, you know, team Yoda as I like to just easily put it through the star Wars, you carry that green or blue lightsaber and you work for the heart chakra, you know? And I think right now, uh, cause I, we did your totem pole. You're living through your snake energy right now, which is all about uh, uh, transformation, major transformation, which is exactly what you're doing for the world right now, which is absolutely, you know, which is what I love about what you do, you know? So, yeah. Yep. Spot on. You're dead right about that. There's a lot of transformations going on in my life. Health wise, great transformation, a lot of cleansing. I've done so many protocols. Uh, lately I'm working out on the beach doing yoga, awesome. um, resistance training, etc. And I've done a lot of cleansing, lots of, and theogens, which are very important, cambo, peyote, um, ayahuasca. You have a do you have a? Um, I I know this is going to be a big buzz for this podcast. Do you have one that you favor, or one that you would recommend for people that are just starting out that want to get started into expanding on that? Want any one of them? Peyote. Peyote. Okay, there you have it, folks. Peyote. You can get into the peyote realm. Uh, I, I think ayahuasca is a little more advanced uh, for a lot of people, um, but peyote's, there you go, folks. You've heard it from the great Santos Bonacci. Peyote's the one he would start with if you haven't tried or jumped into any of those. There you peyote's go. More, more masculine, it's, it's, um, but it's, it's also very pleasing. It's a very pleasant experience. You, you, you actually do experience a lot of bliss. Uh, something akin to MDMA, which is synthetic, but uh, I, actually, I think um, MDA might be a chemical derivation of peyote or LSD. One of the other, one of the two is. <clears throat> so I've had all of those, and um, they've served their purpose. I'm not big on doing a lot of these things. I, I like to just do it when I'm I know I need it. And that's not a lot. I don't do a lot. Um, cannabis is, is my favorite of all time. So I, I don't smoke it these days unless someone passes me a joint, you know, I'll have a, <laughs> I love it. But, um, but I take the oil and I've got um, honey at the moment, which uh, I've been sourced from a curandera here locally a Mayan woman who has put all of the cannabinoids in this honey. So at night before I go to sleep, I've got indigo cannabis with all the cannabinoids in it and I have a pretty good sleep. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good news, man. I'm glad to hear that about, about what's going on with your personal life in that area. Ooh. I've had 10 years of sleep, sleep deprivation yeah. and during those 12, 10 years, I've put out every bit of syncretism that I've done. Or at least you took full advantage of having that as a downside, if you want to look at that, right? I mean, you made uh, lemonade out of lemons with that whole sleep deprivation, so. Yeah, you can see clearly in my videos, most probably about 80% of my videos, I look uh, undernourished. I look exhausted, depleted, unhealthy, unhappy, trying to smile and pretend to be really, really happy. But now I don't, I don't need the smile. It's there. It's now I'm, I'm at a place where the smile is inside of me and it, it shows because I feel it. And so there's no more ego smile. It's more of a being smile here, here in Mexico, Mexico has facilitated a great transformation and has enabled um, a lot of healing in me, a lot of healing. It's, I've still got a ways to go, but uh, my eyes have been opened to, 
to a lot of the dirty energy that has crept into my fields, my emotional field, my mental field, my physical, etheric, uh, spiritual, sexual. And I've had to look at that, you know, and face it. And work with it, transform it, transmute a lot of that. And I've done a, a great lot of work there, a great lot of work. And I'm looking forward to the next few months because a lot of people here in Mexico, down Tulum, Bacala, I mean, just south of Cancun in Puerto Morelos, great people here, all ready to bring syncretism to the next level. We're all ready to uh, do whatever it takes to bring syncretism to the world. I've just released a presentation called, uh, well, The Sand Best. That was a release. I've never done a release of, of such, as such, in my, my days of syncretism, because I've always just called it syncretism. But I found that it doesn't really define much. It doesn't, uh, it describes, but it doesn't explain. And so now that I have this, these two acronyms, which uh, stand for the correct model and the correct method, now people can um, choose to, if they like or not, they can choose to refer to the true system as the same best method. Yeah. You know, Santos, one of the great things I love about you is um, you're very raw and you don't hide behind anything like you're very open telling the world um, like you've been very open with me and the world about what your issues are your challenges you, you haven't hid behind anything which i find that very commendable because a lot of people don't want to tell the world what's going on you know for whatever reason i mean everybody obviously has their own pack path to walk but what i love about you is not only are you super intelligent and you're very loving and caring and compassionate about the world, but you just, you just throw it out on the table and you're not afraid to tell people, Hey, this is what happened to me. And this is what I'm doing. And you know, this is what's going on. And I just find that a very commendable trait uh, in a human being. So I, I'm, I'm greatly really appreciative of, of that part of you. That's one, one of the best things about you, I think is uh, you're, you, you don't hide behind anything. You just, you just let it all out there. And, and then people can, what I think is great about that is people can relate to the things that you're going through and be like, man, I'm going through the same things and I can relate to that. And then they, they're drawn to you and that's, that's how you kind of lure them in. And it's not a matter of, you know, luring them in to, uh, you know, kind of uh, pull, pull the woolly over their eyes. You're, you're, you literally, you draw them in through that aspect and then you get to share your great wisdom with them and I, I just, I find that that's one of the best things about you, dude. That's what I love about Thanks, you. Thanks, brother. Yeah, man. I appreciate that um, uh, kind compliment. I have also, because of that, uh, under extreme duress and torture of um, having been itching for 10 years, apart from the sleep deprivation, I've had a, a nasty skin itch, um, which has created havoc in my life, havoc. And it's also caused me to be, uh, as you said, I, I, yeah, I, I do, I'm pretty raw. So uh, at times I've been very brutal and um, very unkind nasty at times with people and um, I've had to look at that as well and that's caused me more harm than you can imagine. Every time I would have an outburst, uh, I would suffer the consequences for days and those days are over. I can assure you those days, they are well and truly over. But um, that was, that was part of all the good that I did. There was the other side. I, um, I hurt myself and others. And um, if I can make amends somehow, um, 
that's what I'll be doing for the rest of eternity. But um, I know the heavens are very, very forgiving. Um, the heavens are intelligent and wise gods and they know that we are mere mortals and that we have this nature mm -hmm. and so do the gods the gods they also do um the greeks depicted them as good and evil as did everybody all the cultures even in the bible god is good and evil it says it clearly it's there's no mistake about it there's every book every scripture so when you come to a certain point in your advancement and evolution, you turn the corner and many blessings come. Yeah. And I've been blessed with a beautiful partner uh, who is from Mexico. And uh, I consider that to be a reward from the heavens apart from all the syncretism blessings that I've, I've received, I believe in my heart that I am the most blessed man who ever lived because of the syncretism that I have, but I've suffered as well through that period. But now I've got a, um, my prayers have been answered that I have a partner who um, is here with me from Mexico, who has followed my syncretism for many years. We've communicated over the years. And finally, um, she's come to, from um, not far from you, Querétaro, to be here in Quintana Roo with me. And um, we have uh, come together in a, um, a very special way and uh, she is all about supporting syncretism and me and so now I have not only support from many people around the world but I have the support that that I want um, some people like to work on their own they are very very complete and content and can function fully without a partner I'm the sort of guy with six planets in the seventh house, including the sun and moon, that needs to work with partners. And so I'd like to share that happiness with the world and every, everyone listening that, um, yeah, I've been blessed in that way. So uh, I did do a post uh, two days ago, changed my... Facebook profile to show that I'm in a relationship with Julieta Elizabeth and um, I've been blessed. So I know a lot of people will be, will be very, very happy for me. For sure. Well, I mean, do you mind if I share her card on, on, the, on this podcast? Please do. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is her card, everybody. The Jack of Hearts, which is the, uh, you know, the card of universal love. It's the Christ card. Card number 11, the number of magic, the number of electricity, and uh, truly a, a blessing, Santos, a reward, as you said, to come your way, which, you know, you totally deserved with all the giving that you've uh, done over the years. I mean, for as long as I've followed you, you've been doing it longer than I, you know, than I've been following you, but man, you've been, you know, you've put on a lot of effort. And I'm extremely grateful and I've learned so much from you. I mean, I, you know, placed a lot of your videos on repeat over and over and over again, because especially your, I love your, <clears throat> the, the ones, you know, the Vatican owns your soul and all those great videos that you did in the very beginning, they're priceless because they're, they're so, there's all, it's truth in there, you know, and that, and if you're, so if you're not even a Santos Bonacci subscriber, Mr. Astro Theology is where you can find him on YouTube. You should definitely check out, you know, his, video on his series on the Vatican owns your soul because it's a good starting point to really kind of understand how this world works and um and these great changes upon us so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up my brother because I don't want I want to keep this a little bit uh under the radar of under an hour and a half <laughs> but uh so, 
I would like to uh, introduce uh, Julieta, and while you wrap it up, brother, I'll just uh, pop her in the... Um... Pop her on. Yep. Here we are. Beautiful. So, the, jack my... the, the Jack of Hearts, your, your newfound partner. I love it. Um, and uh, you guys, I, I look forward to seeing what you two together can bring to the table. I, I, I can already see the, Santos, I can already see the gleam in your eye, my brother. <laughs> With, uh, with, with her sharing some energy with you. So it's pretty awesome. For sure. And um, Julieta brings a lot of love. Uh, as you said, her card, what was her card again? Jack of Hearts. Yeah. And that's universal love, right? It is. Mm. Well, there's, it's very hard to find a woman with this kind of love. And I've truly been blessed. Um, Julieta's not very fluent in English, so Spanish is a, a main language and um, my uh, hope, well not hope, it, we're actually doing it. Today we um, uploaded a, a live from Playa del Carmen and uh, Julieta is going to be doing a lot of speaking on syncretism since she's so well versed in it in wow. Spanish. So she'll be my um, Spanish helper for the Spanish speaking world, the audience that we have here. Mexico is number 12 on my audience analytics on my YouTube channel. That's pretty high. It's the highest of all the Spanish speaking nations. Mexico is number one. So, I mean, I walk around town here. It's only a town of 30,000. I get recognized by the locals. It's awesome. Well, yeah. I wanna, you know, you know, we, we got, you and I got some big things in store and we're gonna take this platform a little bit higher and get you a little bit more exposure, um, get your presentations uh, out to the world on a more, uh, you know, a, a higher vibrational frequency, so to speak. Um, and you give you that recognition that you deserve because um, you have, you know, that you, dude, you're living out your destiny. That's what I love about it. you're living out your code. And I love seeing people live out their code because you wake up every day and you know you're living out your code. You live, you know, you're living out your destiny. And that means you wake up every day and you don't work. You're not, you know, ever since I've known you, especially when you came to LA, I realized Santos doesn't work. He just creates passion. And I absolutely envy that. I love that, you know, so I, you know, so that's, that's what I'm doing too. And I encourage all of you listening out there to find out what your code is, what your destiny is, you know, syncretize your life, combine all your charts, your numerology and your astrology and your human design, your personality, all these great charts. You should know what your cards are and what your, you should have a reading. Santos, you do readings, right? How can people, I don't know if you're doing them, so I don't want to put you on the spot, but what's the best way for people to get a hold of you if you're in that zone of doing readings? Are you still doing those or what? Yep, yep, I'm doing them again. I took a break for a few months just so that I could attend to my needs and uh, live a bit of my life. <laughs> so I'm doing them again. You can go to my website, universaltruthschool.com. And you can book online and it's very easy to do. All I ask is that you book forward a week or two, not the same day, because <laughs> that really throws a spanner in the works when you book the same day. <laughs> um, yeah, give it a week, a couple of weeks, especially in the new year. I'll be um, more settled and uh, I'll be doing readings for sure. Nice. Well... I look forward to, uh, dude, I look forward to doing some more stuff with you, man. I mean, we're so close now and, uh, I know I got to make my way. It looks like you're going to be staying over in that area. So I'm going to make my way over there to see you guys and, uh, and we'll do some stuff together for sure. I'm looking forward to it. So can't wait. Yeah, man. Me neither. I'm looking forward to it. So folks, thank you all for watching and listening to this podcast. And of course, Santos, I would an honor, always an honor to have you, as a guest on uh, any time I share with you. So thanks for sharing your knowledge with the conjunction and then all these miscellaneous things that we talked about. It's been such an honor and a pleasure and I look forward to next time, brother. Thank you okay, so much, brother. Bye-bye. See you next bye -bye. time, ladies and gentlemen.